stand in your presence, singing holy is your name, singing holy is your name, oh Lord. Singing holy is your name, singing holy is your name, oh Lord. Lord, I stand in your presence, singing holy is your name, singing holy is your name, oh Glory to God, praise Jesus. Welcome to the last Sunday of the month of March. Jehovah God has done it again and again and again. Lift your hands and celebrate our God, our preserver, for continuously preserving us from the desires of our enemies. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Give him all the glory and the honor. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your business. Thank God for how mercy has carried you through the month of March in spite of the challenges, the trials. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Celebrate the mercies of God. Celebrate the goodness and the kindness of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Ma fora vahande li halesho libela hadia. Ma kofoko borodia. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy to someone listening to me this week, only with your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Whatever is about to happen around your environment and your community, it shall not come near your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Look at the book of Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Stop being afraid of the future. We're about to cross over into the month of April, the fourth month of the year. God has been wonderful, gracious, and merciful. Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still. Put yourself together. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there is someone under the influence of my voice that has been attacked by the spirit of fear. Fear of the future, fear of the unknown. Thou say at the Lord, I should tell you, don't be afraid of the future. Stop being afraid of your tomorrow. Your life is in the hand of God and God will not mismanage your destiny. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation and I will be honored throughout the world. Glory to God. Exodus 14 verse 14. Father, we thank you. Exodus 14 and verse 14. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Somebody's been healed. They say you have a cancer of the throat. The power of God has just touched you right now. Every wound in your throat, receive healing in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord himself will fight for you. Put your name there. Just stay calm. Hallelujah. Psalm 46 verse 10 say, be still. Exodus 14, 14 say, be calm. Stay calm. 
put yourself together. What do I do, man of God? Just sing praises to God. Celebrate the faithfulness of Jesus. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of the living God. You will see the hand of God at work for you this week. You will see the hand of God at work for your children this week. Where people have gathered and they are mocking and they are laughing at you. You will see the hand of God turn the situation around this week. And those who are waiting for you to fall, they will wait in vain, says the Spirit of the Lord. Be calm. The Lord himself will fight for you and your household. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your hands. Say, my father, my keeper, my eyes are on you. I refuse to be troubled by the happenings around me. Fight my battles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Fight my battles, Lord. Hand over your battles to God. Father, I hand over my battles to you. In my office, in my business, in my home. I hand it over. In my career, in my ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, my father, my timekeeper. Because my times and future is in thy hands, O oh God. I know that my future is beautiful and secure. If you believe it, declare it in prayers. In the name of Jesus. I know that my future is beautiful and secure. I know that the future of my children are beautiful and secure. I know that the future of my business, my career, my ministry is beautiful and secure because my times are in the hands. Oh God, you are watching me. Your right hand shakes uncontrollably. You can't control it. Every sign of stroke that is being shot at you, I arrest it in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that your suffering business receive the bread of revival. Let that business begin to blossom again. Blossom again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God praise God like I said last Sunday today morning afternoon evening depending on wherever you're watching me from around the world we are going to be discussing so I'm not preaching I'm not teaching but as I conclude this section on understanding divine timing today I see God take you out of the unknown to the known for his glory and his honor I see God use you to humiliate darkness and honor his kingdom to the glory of his holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's important to understand divine timing. If you desire to live your life on purpose, how do you intend to live your life on purpose on earth when you do not know the program, the agenda of God for your life? It's important because friends God's plan is better than your plan and your plan is in God's program your future is in God's plan for your life so understanding divine timing is going to help you stay focused understanding divine timing is going to help you not giving up easily but standing firm do you know how many times those days when we honored the call of God in ministry that the thought to give up came but thank God for the spirit of mercy and grace and understanding of divine timing hallelujah if not we will have abandoned God's program for our lives but glory be to God he did not allow us to fall victim of ignorance in the name of Jesus Christ it's important to understand divine timing because God has a process in everything in everything that he does so you must be vigilant if you want to enjoy your work with God you must be vigilant if you want to enjoy all that God has for you by working in divine timing 
as a business person, as a career person, as a minister of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Everything has a season. There is a time for every activity, for every purpose under heaven. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. For everything, there is a season. There is a season to dream. There is a season to wait after dreaming. There is a season to act on the dream. There is a season for you to begin to see the manifestation of your acting on the dream. If it is the season of waiting and you begin to act on the dream, you will end up being frustrated. If it's your season of dreaming and you're already running, you will end up being frustrated. Friends, the only way to enjoy peace as a child of God on earth is walking at the pace of God because for everything there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven there is a time to show yourself there is a time to go quiet there is a time to hide yourself there is a time to announce what God is doing there is a time to hold it only to yourself and to those God have surrounded you with there is a divine process ordained by God that orders this season so if you don't understand divine season you will miss this process may God help you in Jesus mighty name second Peter chapter 3 verse 8 to 9 second Peter chapter 3 verse 8 to 9 as we round up this month of March the month of divine timing it's my prayer that as you journey through April May June July August September October November December if Jesus tarry may you enjoy this month like you have never enjoyed any part of this year before in your life may you enjoy it because you are walking in the divine timing of God for your life. Everything, the lines will be falling onto you on, on, on pleasant places to the honor and the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. 2 Peter 3, verse 8 to 9. Look at this carefully and underline it in your Bible. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day, that is why you must understand divine timing. A day is like a thousand years to the lord so why you think that god is being slow for god is just a process of time a day is like a thousand years to the lord and a thousand years is like a day to the lord look at verse 9 glory to god the lord isn't really being slow we saw that last sunday so if you don't understand verse 8, you cannot appreciate verse 9. The Lord is not really being slow. The problem is because you do not understand verse 8. That a thousand years is like a day before God. So know that with God, there must be a waiting season before a season for manifestation. But he will not fail you. He will come through as he has promised. And those who might be mocking and laughing at you today, they will join you to celebrate and congratulate you tomorrow when the honor of God is visibly seen upon your life and upon your household. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think, no, he is being patient for your sake because to him, remember, God does not walk with time or in time. He is eternal. That's what the name Jehovah means. It is mankind that works in time to be able to determine progress of life. God doesn't. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. So he gave man time. So for God to operate in your life and for you to enjoy all that he has in stock for you, you must understand divine timing, not natural time. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. There are divine process that order this season which is natural. You must understand that. Please take note of it. There are divine process that order these natural seasons. So you must be sensitive and understand divine timing. Last Sunday we did share steps 
by which you can take to understand divine timing. May God continue to empower you and enable you to walk in those steps in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. Like I said today, we are discussing. Look at Luke 3, 23. Jesus was about 30 years old. Please underline this in your Bible. Jesus, as he came to this earth, as a man and as God, he needed to follow God's timing for him to execute his earthly ministry. Jesus couldn't go before God or after God. Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. Jesus was known as the son of Joseph before then. Joseph was the son of Helen. Divine timing. So there is a time to dream. There is a time to have a vision. There is a time to walk in that vision. There is a time for the vision to begin to materialize. There is a time for wilderness experience. There is a time for canal experience. If you walk with God, you will enjoy the peace of God in each of these phases, no matter the time that you find yourself. And I decree and declare, henceforth, you will not miss God's time for your life. And all that God has in stock for you, you will enjoy it in the name of Jesus Christ. It's therefore important for us to pray, even as the psalmist said, he said, Lord, teach us how to number our days. It's very important. That is why on every birthday, God by grace brings you into, you sit down and you write, Lord wisdom, how do I navigate this age according to your plan and program for my life? Not what somebody else is doing, that's what I do, but according to your plan and progress for my life. Psalm 90 and verse 12. Psalms chapter 90 and verse 12. Glory to God. Look at this. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Look at the King James Version. Hallelujah. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom so that we know how to guide ourselves. In other words, life is in season and phases. So for every age God brings you into, he has he has brought you into a season because he does not operate in season he gives us season to operate in as he guides us on earth so for every season every age god brings you into he brings you into a season so you need to ask god for wisdom on how to apply yourself to it open your hands say lord help me to be a man a woman of discipline in my waiting season as I walk in your time. Clap your hands and turn into prayer. Pray, child of God, pray for your children. Grace, Lord. Grace, Lord. Me fully bina asa ragadea. Me sakondo bole gedina agradia. Masakra toko delege deliku tu bahadia. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see you in the spirit. To lift your legs is a problem. To climb the stairs is a challenge. There is a sugar problem, says the spirit of the Lord. I pray for healing from diabetes. Please go and check yourself in the hospital. The weakness of the body. Receive your healing now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Open your hands. Say, my Father, my helper, help me to always do the right thing at the right time. Because there is a time to do things, not to do it as someone else is doing it, but for yourself as God planned for your life. There is the right time to do things. My Father, my helper, help me, Lord to do things concerning my life at the right time. Lord, I receive grace in Jesus' mighty name. As you begin to understand divine timing, friends, 
where to be and where not to be at a particular time, you will begin to see the fullness of all that God has designed for your life here on earth. Take note of what I'm about to say. There is a connection between time and place. For instance, if I say to you, meet me by 10 p.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., I must need to tell you where you should meet me. I can't just tell you meet me without telling you where you are to meet me. Friends, for everywhere God takes you to, there is a season, there is a time. God has a purpose and a plan for you. The Bible says at a particular time, God comes to meet Adam and Eve in the garden for fellowship. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse from verse 1. You need to know when God's time is up for you in a particular season. Glory be to God. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. The serpent was the shewet of all the white animals the Lord God has made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really said you must not eat the fruit from any of the tree of the garden? Verse 2. Of course, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied, verse 3. Glory to God. It is only the fruit from the tree of the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Verse 4. Glory to God. You wouldn't die, the serpent say. The serpent replied to the woman. Verse 5. Glory to God. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Verse 6. Glory to God. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful. Its fruit looks delicious and she wanted the wisdom it will give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. They missed God. Verse 7 glory to god at that moment their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness so they sewed thick leaves together to cover themselves as eight glory to god when the cool of the evening breezes were blowing the man and his wife heard the lord god walking about in the garden so they hid from the Lord God among the trees. God comes down to have fellowship with the man and the woman in the garden at this particular time. Because of ignorance of the wisdom of God, even after being warned by God, Adam and Eve fell to the deceit of Satan. And when the time of fellowship comes as usual, they were nowhere to be found. They hid themselves because the power of sin has put them in the place of shame. Sin brings shame, disgrace, and reproach. I pray that in the name of Jesus, for the grave of the desires of this world, you will not miss the program and the agenda of God for your life. You will not miss the time of God for your life. All in the garden belongs to them, except for this one tree that God gave them an instruction. They were to be in the place of fellowship and they were not, and they miss God. Glory to God. Look at verse 9, and we stop there. Hallelujah. Then the Lord God called to man and said, Where are you? Because he was supposed to be there. Divine timing. At that particular time, God comes in the cool of the breeze to meet man and woman for fellowship. When you miss God's time for your life, friends, please, this is a caution. You could become vulnerable to the deceit of the wicked. If they were in the place of fellowship as they were supposed to be, as God has planned with them, the enemy would not have succeeded in deceiving them against that which is God's plan and program for their life. So time and place are connected. You need to know when God's time is up for you in a particular season. A season is a period of time 
where God could tell you to be doing a particular thing or act in a particular way. Maybe that is the season of hiding or the season of showing yourself or the season of operating in a particular ministry. But when that season is over, you need to understand what God is saying. Many times God will allow certain things to happen in our life so that he can move us forward. I've seen that often happen in my life. Sometimes when a season ends, we do not want to leave that season. So God, stir up certain things to happen so that you can move to the next phase that he, God, has proposed and has designed for you. I leave you with these words. Do you trust God? Do you trust that God is the one guiding you? If you do, put your faith in the hands of God. We all have, like I said last Sunday, to dance heaven's music for our life. And that music differs with everyone. Psalm 62 verse 8. See what the psalmist said. Glory to God. Psalm 62 verse 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 62 verse 8. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. It doesn't matter which season that you are in. The season of dreaming, the season of waiting, the season of acting, the season of running is difficult. But this is where I draw my courage from, as I say often, the word of God. I do not wait for men to encourage me. Hallelujah, glory be to Jesus. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Even when a particular season seems to be longer than necessary, I believe that the God whom I serve knows what he is doing. Like we saw last Sunday in the case of Sarah, God came for her at the time which he said he would. Friends, God is not slow. God will not disappoint you. I stand today on the authority of the word of God and I decree and declare, as heaven has spoken this year, it is your year of mercy and divine shifting. The mercy of God will shift things to you. You will not end this year the way you started it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, God will manifest His glory. You will see things you have never seen before in your life. Strange gifts shall be brought to you shall be brought to your children in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Take every time now serious, friends. Remember, time is man's greatest resource on earth. Time is greater than money. If you lose money, you can regain it and even make much more. But if you lose time, you have lost it. Only the grace of God can redeem your time. I pray that God grant you mercy as you walk with this understanding every season of your life is a particular time may god continue to favor you and may you say like job i will wait for my divine timing comes and it shall come in jesus name job 14 and verse 14. job said i will wait in spite of all the experiences happening around me i will wait for my divine timing understanding divine timing frees you friends like i've been saying since the beginning of this month from disappointment and from frustration job 14 and verse 14. glory to god hallelujah Ten. can the dead live again no this life you have has no duplicate make the most of it that is why you cannot allow the enemy to frustrate you and to defeat you if so this will give me hope through all my years of struggle temptation trials and experience i will eagerly await the release of death when my assignment here on earth is accomplished and fulfilled look at the king james version job 14 verse 14 i like the way the king james places it if a man die shall he live again no all the days of my appointed time i will wait till my change come i will wait for my divine timing open your hand say lord whatever divine timing i have missed help me lord to catch up oh yes friends jehovah can help you 
Jehovah can help you. He says, redeem the time. Whatever divine timing I have missed, Lord, in my ministry, in my career, in my life, in my home, Lord, in my business, help me, Lord, to catch up. I receive supernatural speed. To catch up, Lord. To catch up, Lord. To catch up, Lord. To catch up, Lord. Le paragadagado, le bragado no go segedina hadia. Rande de le bogo shegede le bogodia. Maka koko telebena agara da gula baha sataya. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we begin to round up, the enemy knows the importance of divine timing. Satan knows that when you miss his divine timing, he has an opportunity to take an advantage over you. Many who the devil has an advantage over is as a result of missing God's timing. Remember, in the day, he's a pillar of cloud. In the night, he's a pillar of fire. So imagine if you miss where you should be under the night, under fire, and the day, under cloud. You give the devil the advantage to take charge over your life. God forbid in the name of jesus so there are things the devil uses we're going to look at that and then we begin to pray there are things there are devices the devil uses to make us children of god miss divine timing what is divine time the time of god appointed for certain things to happen in our life in our marriages in our children life in our business in our career so satan puts these devices so that we can get deceived like he did for adam and if they miss God and they saw shame. What are these devices? What are these devices? Number one, impatient. Many have lost God's program for their life because they are impatient. Like we saw in the case of Sarah, offering her servant to her husband for a child. But God still came through for her. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 impatient is very dangerous friends receive grace to wait on God and to be patient God is not slow to fulfilling his promises Hebrews 10 36 for ye have need of patience is a must if you truly desire to fulfill the purpose of God for your life and to walk in divine timing patient is a must in your career in your business what God has said he will make it happen Yes, the millions God has promised you, the crowd God has promised you, the grace God has promised you, the breakthrough God has promised you, the healing, the blessing God has promised you, they are all going to happen in His time. You need patience for that. For ye have need of patience. After ye have done the will of God, you have discovered God's will. I mean, the plan of God for my life. There are certain things I want to happen now. They are not happening yet. And God said to me, wait, they will come. And I'm waiting. Glory to Jesus. You, that businessman, businesswoman, God is speaking to you. Wherever you are watching me from around the world, receive grace for patience. He said, ye might receive the promise. That promise will definitely come. Look how the New Living Translation put it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Patient endurance is what you need now. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I perceive someone is receiving the word of God so that you will continue to do God's will. Don't let the devil discourage you. After all, all the things you've been doing for God, where is the benefit and where is the result? Many have fallen like that from the faith. Many have fallen like that from, from fellowshipping with God because the devil told them, all this you've been doing for God, where is the proof? What? a life from the pit of hell god is going to come through for you then you will receive all that he has promised you so number one device the devil used in pushing many of us out of divine timing is impatient number two wrong association satan position people around you to distract you and to waste your time please write this down a companion of a person going nowhere end up nowhere God told me that many years ago as a young minister. A con so I made it a duty that I don't make friends. Maybe one or two. Because you can't make friends with people not going where you are going to. You will miss where you are supposed to be going to. Glory be to Jesus Christ. 
Some of you listening to me, your problem is that you have too many friends and that's why you are heading nowhere. Lock yourself in the purpose of God. Bury yourself in God's plan. Your best friend assignment is not your assignment. Your twin brother or sister's assignment is not your assignment. Your father's assignment is not your assignment. Except otherwise, if God chooses to call you to do the same thing, identify God's plan for your life and walk in it. As you serve under a work or serve under a master in business, walk with loyalty and faithfulness and pursue until the fulfillment of God perfects in your life. Glory to God. Make friends with people going to where you are going to. Make friends with people speaking the language you are speaking. Make friends with people talking what you are talking. Don't join yourself with a company of people that are not going where you are going to. Remember, evil communication corrupts good manner. Look at Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Look at the New Living Translation. Amos 3 verse 3. Glory to God. Can two people walk together without agreeing without agreeing on the direction and that is your problem the other one says i'm going to the west you say you are going to the north and you still keep that person as a friend and you are working together can't you see why you are stagnant can't you see why you are not making any form of progress when you are talking about prayer they are talking about parting when you are talking about investing for God, they are talking about how to waste money on organizing party and pro project that does not glorify God. When you are talking about investing in your family and building a life for your family, they are talking about how to travel around the world just to waste money on unprofitable things. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? Number three device the enemy used to make a lot of believers miss divine timing is alternative agenda and program. Satan shows you alternative agenda and program outside what God has called you to do. He gives you ideas that has nothing to do with the program and the assignment of God for your life. You now have alternative ideas, you now have alternative agenda, you now have alternative program and you abandon the program of God for your life. You miss divine timing. Number four, demonic opposition and distractions this demonic opposition and distraction can also be part of wrong association that man or woman the devil has planted in your life whose assignment is to distract you oppositions from the powers of darkness because the enemy knows as long as you keep working in god's program for your life you will fulfill all god wants you to do and you will enjoy all god has planned for you and he doesn't want that in the name of jesus I rebuke every satanic distraction from your children, from you, from your business, from your ministry. In the name of Jesus, remain focused in Jesus' mighty name. Number five, ignorance of divine timing. I thank God for this month. I thank God for the calls I've been receiving and the testimonies that have been coming in. And I want to encourage as many of you who are listening, who are following, please keep sending your testimony. If you can even make a one minute video from whichever country you're watching from, whatever God is done in your life, please keep sending it. It encourages us to know that God is doing these things in your life. Ignorant of divine timing. Now that you know the importance of divine timing, you will not miss God's program again for your life in Jesus' name. Number six, bitterness and anger towards God's people. Bitterness is dangerous. Anger towards God's people. Anger and bitterness towards vessels of God. When you are angry towards God's people, you are angry towards God's vessel. You miss divine timing. Satan has choked many destinies with bitterness and anger. People get angry by even watching preachers on TV. People get angry and walk out of their churches for no reason. People get angry at those God has set over them spiritually. Even if they make mistakes, because they make mistakes sometimes. But don't allow bitterness and anger deny you the blessings of divine timing. Number seven, procrastination. Like I've said, procrastination is the graveyard where opportunities are buried. What you can do today, don't postpone for tomorrow. Don't give the devil that place. And number eight, finally, unforgiveness and sin. When you are living in sin and you are walking in unforgiveness, you, you lose every sense of sensitivity 
about divine timing you lose consciousness of god's program and god's agenda for your life open your hands i decree henceforth my life my destiny must never misses divine timing or purpose of God for my life. Clap your hands and turn it to prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You have a tightness in this part of your body numbness towards the left part of your chest god heals you now in the name of jesus fear comes on you when this pain comes i rebuke and i release you now you've been to the hospital several times you've done ecgs you've done all manner of tests it proves that there is nothing wrong with you in your heart region but yet this attack keeps coming receive the touch of god receive the touch of god in jesus name there's a woman watching me you've been having terrible nightmare this nightmare is about your husband you see this man trying to choke you or doing diabolical things in the dream the lord is speaking to you that this man is joined company with wrong association of people who are doing terrible things daughter of zion i pray for god's mercy into your home now and i pray for the deliverance of your husband i break the hand and that which the enemy has put over your family be broken in the name of jesus be broken 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 in the mighty name of jesus christ open your hand say i decree I will never die untimely dead until I have fulfilled all God has ordained for me to do. Say my children will never die untimely dead until they have fulfilled all God has ordained for them to do. Do you believe it? Pray for yourself and pray for your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command all form of ulcers, cancers, diabetes, every sickness in the blood, kidney, liver, your cells, I command every sickness in the blood out of your body now in the name of Jesus. I decree healing from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, I want you to pray after me. You can't afford to go any further without having Jesus in your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I accept you into my life as my Lord and my personal Savior. Forgive me, Lord, my sins. I ask in your name. If you've prayed this prayer, congratulations. You are saved and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I decree that this week the Lord favors you. As you cross into the month of April, Continue to enjoy the abundance of God's blessing and favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree as you have seen the end of March, you will continue to see the end of each month this year if Jesus starts. In the mighty name of Jesus, God favor your path this week. God favor the path of your children this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And please, I want to encourage you. You join me in preaching by sharing the gospel. For every life you give the opportunity to hear the word of God, you receive the blessings of God and the favor of God upon you. The world needs to hear God's word. Allow God to use you as a vessel as you share the word that you receive every Sunday to the glory of his name. Wherever you're watching me from around the world, be a vessel of for God by sharing the gospel and receive God's abundant blessing in Jesus mighty name April is our month of breaking new grounds get ready you will break new grounds spiritually you will break new grounds financially you will break new grounds in your career 
great opportunities will be presented to you. You will enter into new faces in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you.